welcome back to Sprague River Homestead. So this week on our Raising Rabbit series, we're going to go ahead and talk about what to put in those nest boxes that we talked about last week. Um, I didn't think about it at the time, but apparently y'all have quite a few questions. So we're going to go ahead and talk about what I put in nest boxes and what I do and don't recommend. So nest box fill material varies wildly by the person who's doing it. Um, I've seen everything from shavings to hay to wool put in nest boxes. Everybody seems to have a different method. There's uh, basically three things that we use around here, and we'll go over each one of them. Now, when you're doing your nest box, the first thing you want to do is put about an inch of a good absorbent material in the bottom. This is going to catch your urine. Um, it's going to keep the, the straw or hay or whatever you're using on the upper part a little bit drier and a little bit cleaner. Babies usually don't root all the way to the bottom of the box, so it's more kind of like a litter layer in the bottom. Now, most people will use pine shavings. I don't like pine shavings. I used to use them when I first started out. The thing to avoid when it comes to pine shavings is that shavings, no matter how clean they are, tend to be pretty dusty. Um, you'll also tend more likely to get um, a condition called nest box eye. And this tends to be because shavings hold on to the moisture and they tend to kind of, uh, kind of mold is what I found, um, unless it's really, really warm out. So you kind of want something really absorbent that is going to hold on to the moisture, but not necessarily mold. So what I'm going to recommend, and I know it costs some money, um, but you're not going to use a whole lot of it, is this product here called CareFresh. It's made by Healthy Pet. Um, it comes in several different colors. The cheapest is kind of a brown they were out when I went to the store, so I got this really fun confetti <laughs> colored one. It's like blue and pink and purple and yellow. And what this stuff does is it, it absorbs three times more than shavings does. Um, it holds on to it. It doesn't mildew. It doesn't mold. To me, it seems to expand and it dries a little bit better. Dust free, which is a huge deal. And the company claims it's got a 10-day odor, odor control. Now, when I was using shavings in the bottom of my nest boxes, usually at a day, about day five, I'd have to take the babies out, clean the nest box, and put, put stuff back in. When you've got anywhere from 10 to 15 litters at a time, this gets really tedious. Um, it is part of Raisin Rabbit, so if you go with shavings, just know that that's going to be part of it. When I went to this stuff, however, and I had used this way back in the late 90s, back when I used to actually breed rats. <laughs> I had pet rats. And we used this for bedding instead of, of shavings in the bottom. Um, so when I went to this in my nest boxes, what I found is I can go the full 14 days. Because at 14 days, we usually go ahead and pull, pull our nest unless it's really cold out. Um, I can go the full 14 days without a lot of odor, without a lot of wetness. Any of that sort of thing, which is what I would have to do in the shavings. So, is a bag of this going to set you back a bit? Yes, it will. One of these big bales here, locally for me, if you go with the brown color, is about 18 bucks. Seems like a lot, but keep in mind, like I said, you're only using an inch or so. So, one of these bales for me, even with the bigger rabbits, will easily do anywhere from, from 15 to 20 uh, nests. So, for me, I think it's worth it. For you, it might not be, but I would definitely look into the CareFresh. We really, really like it. I think it's a great product, and I don't give an endorsement very easily. I also like that it's made in the United States. I know, I'm a patriot. Um, so, it's a big deal to me. Um, and good customer service from the company. Every time I've ever had a question and sent in an email, I get a response right back. So, it's definitely something to look forward or look into. So, like I said, you're going to put an inch of that really absorbent material in the bottom of the nest. So in my case, I'm going to put an inch of that care fresh in there. I'm not going to pack it. I'm just going to go ahead and put an inch, use half an inch, an inch, whatever you like the best. Um, like I said, I use an inch. I could probably buy with less, but, and then on top of it, you're going to put, depending on the depth of your box, you're going to put anywhere from two to four inches of a nesting type material. Now, everybody seems to do this differently. You can use hay. I've got a girlfriend in town who loves to use hay. And she'll put a two-inch layer of hay and then a big pile in the cage and let the, the 
um, doe build the nest herself. I like a chopped straw, at least during the winter months. And this is different than what you're going to get in the big straw bales. A lot of times what you get in the big straw bales is really coarse. Um, so this stuff is a little bit more expensive. It comes in the 50 pound bales, the co super compressed bales that you can get at the feed store. And you can kind of see the difference if you use straw between this and regular stuff. It's very, very short. It's rolled a little bit flatter. And it's softer. Not that you can tell that through the camera. But it is softer stuff. Um, it's still plenty long. It's not real dusty. And if you've got a bale that is a little bit dusty, I just go ahead and pick it up, shake it out. I'll use one of these nest boxes, these wire ones, if I'm not actually using it. I'll throw the straw in there shake it out real quick to get any of the fines out of it moms like this they can pack it around you know the good old rabbit hay stash um they can pack it around they can dig in it they can they can make a nice little nest with it and it packs nice when they pull hair um I, i've been using that stuff for about four years now and i will never go back to a bigger bale even though it tends to be cheaper when you get the bigger harder tougher straw um you tend to get more cuts on your kits, which is a big deal, especially if you show. If you're not showing, it's probably not a big deal unless, you know, you get an infection in the skin. The big thing is, for me, you know, like in my American Blues, if I get a good cut in a baby, it can turn into a white line. Scars and rabbits often turns, turn white. So, for me, I'm going to go with something super soft because I can't risk scarring in my kits. So another option and what we use a lot in the summertime is actually shredded newspaper. So you can kind of see I just run it through the uh, shredder in the house. Easy peasy, no big deal. Tends to be pretty dust free. If you don't read the newspaper, and we don't, <laughs> I get free nickel ads and free penny savers and all that stuff that you see at Taco Bell and at the feed store, the little tiny free newspapers. The big thing to know when you're doing paper, shredded paper for your nest, not any paper will do. You really want to go with a newsprint type paper. And the reason for this is that most of the inks are going to be vegetable based. If you use, you know, leftover um, junk mail, stuff like that, those tend to be petroleum based inks. Now, I, I know people who go both ways. They don't, you know, it doesn't really bother them to use petroleum um, inks in the nest box. For me, we try and go away from petroleum products whenever possible, so we don't do that. I like the fact that they're vegetable-based inks. Um, they don't bleed real bad, so you don't get kits that are a lot of different colors. The downside to using this is if you've got a doe that really likes to pack, and by pack, that's where she picks up a bunch of stuff, runs around the cage, and builds her nest. Does that pack really don't like this stuff. They get a mouthful of it, with their saliva, it turns to glump. <laughs> you know, just a big glop of sodden newsprint. So, it kind of depends a little bit on your dough. I do like that it's very, very light. Um, it's not very thick stuff. So, when you've got that mixed in with the hair, it makes for a really pretty puffy nest. Which is really nice in the summer months. I've not had any problems using that in the summer and the best part of this, other than needing a shredder, and I would recommend a shredder as opposed to doing it by hand, just because the pieces are finer, um, it's more or less free. You know, unless, if you've got a neighbor that reads the newspaper, you could probably get some from them. Like I said, we just pick up the freebies. They frown if you go in and take a whole stack, but, you know, you pick up one or two here and there. By the time you get around to a nesting day, you've got a whole stack, so... It kind of depends on what you want to do, but this I use just like the straw. So once I've got my absorbent material in, I do go ahead and put uh, probably about a three to four inch layer of this. It does pack down a little bit more. Um, the thing I don't like about this is if you've got a doe that um, urinates in her nest box at all, this stuff will get kind of soggy in a hurry. Whereas a straw being a straw will dry a little bit better. So... There again, that just makes it even more important to have that absorbent layer in the bottom. And, um, you know, like I said, that's, that's about all there is to it. It's not exactly rocket science. If you choose not to use an absorbent layer and just go with just nesting material, 
just be prepared to clean your nest boxes more often. Um, when we started out, that's all we did. We used just plain old straw in the nest boxes, and they did fine. So it's all about what you want to do. I think it's more hygienic to use an absorbent layer, but there again, every rabbit breeder is going to do it a little bit differently. Okay, so that's your nest box filler from Sprague River Homestead this week. If you have questions or comments, go ahead and leave them down in the comments for me. Next week, we are going to build nest boxes. Yay! So you'll see how I do mine and uh, get a little tutorial on how to build them yourself. Of course, you know, everybody does it differently. But I've got some plywood and some one by boards. I will build both so you can see the difference in construction and how to fasten them together and all that good stuff. So that's coming up hopefully next week. If not, then it'll be the week after that. But that's it from Springer Homestead this time, and I will see you next time. Happy homesteading!